Howdy guys, Smitty here, and this video is going to be a complete wipe guide for the 13.5 patch that's going to be useful for both new and experienced players and discuss what I think are the best options to propel yourself into max level traders quickly while also stacking up rubles early on and into mid wipe. First off, when you finally boot up the game after installing that fresh white patch, I highly recommend that you choose the USEC faction in the voice of Josh. The reason why is because USECs have a much easier time questing on Lighthouse because they're not immediately aggroed by the rogues, unless you get close to them or shoot them, that is. This leads to you being able to roam around and get quests outside of the rogue compound done extremely easily. And the reason why I say you should choose the Josh voice is because all bear characters as a whole are noisier than Josh or even most of the other USEC voices, and Josh has the least obnoxious breathing and hurt noises than the other USEC operators. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Now, as far as the main strategy goes for the wipe, the majority of hardcore grinders and streamers for the game will be doing the same thing which I'm about to recommend to you. You want to focus the vast majority of your effort only to questing. This is by far the fastest way to level up, and you obviously need a quest to get the trader rep to progress to higher level trader tiers and get better gear, which has a snowball effect allowing you to quest quicker and progress faster. And since you're going to be in better gear and on different quests and needing different stuff than what everyone else does, it's going to allow for smooth sailing. Now as far as the order in which you're going to be questing, this isn't necessarily important. It may change due to how in the 13.5 patch notes it was quoted that the questing experience would be overhauled, but I wouldn't panic because in prior wipes this was also said and only a few things were changed. But the main number one thing to keep in mind, and I cannot stress this enough while questing, is stacking your quests and being efficient with your raids. This can be summed up to making sure that you're never working on just one task when you enter a raid, unless obviously it makes sense. And the way I recommend you doing this is by using websites like Tarkov Tracker and the Tarkov Wiki to be looking at the following quests ahead of you and the quest that you're on and what items are needed to be found in raid in the future. This image that I'm showing you right now on the screen is also linked down in the description, as well as a bunch of other useful links that can help you with keeping track of progress this wipe but this shows all the required questing items as of right now, but obviously this might be updated with the new content that's being implemented. The items highlighted in green need to be found in raid, so if you find a rare item that's on there, make sure not to chuck it, otherwise you might end up having to spend literal days of playtime looking for them again. So as you're moving through your raids and doing your tasks, you want to be actively looking for these items and seeking them out before you get to the quests that require them. A good example of this would be you're going into one of your first few raids, the wipe, once you're level 2, and you decide you're going woods to get the note for Jaeger to unlock his trader. So you're bringing a Mosin or a load over and over, and you're killing scavs in order to level up your sniper skill and get that grind started, but you're also looking for Saluas and Tashanka as well, and other specific food items Jaeger's gonna want like 10 quests from now. And then once you unlock Jaeger, you can buy the 133 shotguns that proper needs in order to complete debut and get that turned in. Now this sounds like a lot or like an extreme scenario, but typically it's pretty easy to do just by looking at what quests you have right now and then also what quests are in the near distant future that you might need items for. And most importantly, you're just trying to make the most of your time and most of your raids that you're running in order to be able to progress quickly. The focus is on efficiency. When you're looking for these items, specifically things like car batteries and spark plugs, or maybe tech and food loot, it's going to be a good idea to scav, especially on maps like Interchange, especially early on if you're having a rough time getting a good base in the wipe. Uh, things like running out of armor or maybe needing some extra money in case you go broke, it's going to help you out a lot. But it is important to note that you can over scav and waste time spinning your wheels doing things not related to quest progression. So if there isn't a goal to your raid or items that you're going to be looking for in that scav run, it's probably better to just do a PMC raid. Time spent waiting on a scav cooldown or super long match times can typically be better spent on your PMC grinding out that last kill task you need in order to get to the next cluster of quests that you can stack together. Now here's my controversial take. If you are a diehard grinder of the wipe and you're attempting to speed run, I would highly recommend doing the majority of the grind alone. This is because it'll cut down on queue and match bugs, but also because your squad mates are going to be needing the same quest items and quest kills at the same time as you. But there are exceptions to this, like if you need a certain quest key to continue a quest chain and your friends also need a key you have, that's a perfect opportunity for a low risk raid to keep you progressing. 
Now, whenever I'm streaming early in the wipe, I always seem to be asked where to find specific quest items or keys and what gear sets people should be running around what level. As far as quest items go, there are a lot of different barters available and also new barters added in almost every single wipe to help people with annoying to find quest keys and other items that don't have a static spawn or things like gunsmith attachments. So make sure you're checking for those. And if there isn't a barter for a key you need, make sure to be looting filing cabinets as you're going by or jackets throughout your raid. This will keep you from having to drop millions on quest keys or allow you to profit off of keys you don't need to buy the ones you do. Maps like Customs are great for this. Things like gas analyzers and sluas you can get lucky spawning with on your scab while you're doing those in the first few days, but they can also very commonly spawn in technical crates that are scattered around most maps. But I want to note that in the roadmap that was released recently, it was stated that there will be a new system in place that'll change where these crates spawn, so be aware of that. For gear sets, there really isn't a perfect response on exactly what you should be running when because you have so many different things that could happen. You could have a different trader level than another person during a certain quest, or maybe you got really lucky and got a scab boss or a raider gear set early on. Instead, I can only offer three recommendations that might help. First, don't have gear fear and run the better gear you find when it makes sense. Having killer armor and Alton's rot in your stash the whole wipe doesn't help you when it's taking up a ton of valuable inventory space, especially early on for found and raid items. When the strength of the gear only gets worse as the wipe goes on because people are getting better ammo and armor themselves. Second is making sure that you bring in the Mosin early on, or at least bring one with you later in order to reload for sniper skill points. Reloading a stack of ammo per raid will allow you to cap out on skill points to work towards the checkpoints in the sniper quest lines that ultimately require you to get level 10 sniper skill. And last, during the early levels, I have two staples for questing guns. The first is things that shoot 762 by 39 PS ammo, since statistically it's one of the best rounds you can get for the money and you have access to it really early. And also level two Peacekeeper allows you to run the UMP with FMJ rounds, which is still a monster. It deals tons of blunt and limb damage and aim punches people like crazy while also still being cheap. Moving on to the conversation of making money and the huge ruble sink that is the hideout. I think the hideout early on can help speed up the questing progress drastically. Things like workbench, lavatory, med station, and nutrition unit should all be level one no matter what playstyle you have due to their convenience. Being able to craft a shanka and things that you may have forgotten like clin wipers or peacekeeper quests are extremely handy, uh, but because of how useful these upgrades are, everyone wants them, which means the items that are used to craft them are also what will either help aid you in getting rich and making money or will help bankrupt you. You shouldn't be afraid of spending money on questing and useful hideout upgrades that will speed up your leveling process, but you shouldn't be dumping tons of money into maxing out the hideout early. Things like solar power, boost generator, and Bitcoin farm can be nice second or third month goals, but within the first few weeks, there's essentially no reason to try to grind them out, and they're nothing but a speed bump for progress and your bank account. They're going to require tons of other hideout upgrades and items that everyone needs themselves. But this is also how you can become extremely rich early on yourself. Maybe you're not a hardcore quester or you don't even care about getting max level traders and you're happy at being level two or three traders, but you want to stack up rubles. It could be a great move for you to do some interchange runs in your PMC or even your scav since you don't care about progression in order to suck up all the industrial and tech items that people need to send them straight to the flea market. A huge tip for maximizing your rubles later on in the wipe would be hoarding things like sugar, lettuce, or water filters and then selling them a month or multiple weeks down the road. Now, this may sound contrary to what I said earlier, but if you have inventory space or a junk box and you're focused on making money, these items are five times or more what they are right now early wipe later on because it takes a large amount of time for the bulk of the player base to get to a point where they actually need them. That's going to be the end of the video, guys. Hopefully this was able to offer you some insight or help you in the wipe grind. Make sure to check out the YouTube channel and subscribe. I would appreciate it a ton. There's going to be a bunch of other wipe content being uploaded here. Uh, and make sure to check out the stream. We're going to be live daily. The link's down in the description below. Peace.